Welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today, we are going to discuss the news presented on the screen. Time stamping for the same has been provided in the description box below. Let's start our today's discussion. The first news appears as a snippet on page number 7. The news reads, Bill suggests armed force for protection of the river Ganga. In this news, the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Regeneration has prepared a draft bill to prevent pollution in River Ganga. So a panel headed by Justice Girdhan Malviya had submitted this draft bill named National River Ganga Regeneration Protection and Management Bill 2017. However, another panel was constituted by the government who suggested certain revision in this particular bill. This particular topic becomes a part of GS Paper 3 specifically under Conservation, Environmental Pollution and Degradation as well as Environment Impact Assessment and also Disaster Management and also a part of GS Paper 2 under statutory, regulatory and various quasi-judicial bodies. The draft bill envisages the constitution of National Ganga Council and a National Ganga Rejuvenation Authority. These institutions will enforce the law and also help in preventing pollution in the river Ganga, which will ultimately help in protecting the ecosystem of river Ganga. Now the bill also provides for certain offenses and for that the bill provides for certain fines as well as imprisonment from 2 to 5 years. Some of the offenses described in the bill are construction activities causing obstruction in the flow of the river, withdrawal of groundwater for industrial or commercial purpose, discharging of untreated or treated sewage into the river. The bill also describes commercial fishing as an offense, commercial fishing or aquaculture in river and its tributaries, and construction of any permanent structure for residential or commercial purpose is also prohibited as per the bill and the draft bill also ensures that no person or municipal authority shall establish or take any step to set up any commercial or residential premise which may result in discharge of any sewage into the river. So the bill effectively prevents or prohibits any construction activity which may disturb the flow of the river and it is in this aspect that is to regulate these offenses the bill has provided for creation of an armed force which is called the armed Ganga protection corps. These armed Ganga protection corps have been provided with the power to arrest those who pollute the river and they are also empowered to levy any fine or imprison in case a person is found to pollute the river. These GPC personals that is Ganga protection corps personals will be provided by the Ministry of Home Affairs and shall be deployed by the National Ganga Rejuvenation Authority. So this news on draft bill to prevent pollution in river Ganga by constitution National Ganga Council as well as National Ganga Rejuvenation Authority and also by deploying armed Ganga protection corps becomes important. Now some questions have been asked previously by UPSC on the river Ganga. Let's go through two questions one asked in the year 2014 and the one asked in the year 2018. The question asked in the year 2014 was other than poaching what are the possible reasons for the decline in population of Ganges river dolphins? The options given were construction of dams and barrages on rivers, increase in population of crocodiles in the rivers, getting trapped in fishing nets accidentally, use of synthetic fertilizers and other agricultural chemicals in crop fields in the vicinity of the rivers. In this question, option 2 was incorrect, rest all the other options that is 1, 3 and 4 were correct. So the correct answer here was C that is 1, 3 and 4. Now another question was asked in the year 2018 on the concept of sand mining in river beds. The question read which of the following is are the possible consequences of heavy sand mining in river beds. The options were decreased salinity in the river, pollution of groundwater and lowering of the water table. Because of heavy sand mining there is removal of sand from the river bed. Now this removal of sand from the river bed results in increased flow of the river resulting in erosion of river banks. Now these sands act like sponge which further help in recharging the water level. Thus depletion of sand results in declining water table. So lowering of water table is a correct option. Now these sands also act as an efficient filter because of the gravels present and these filter out various pollutants and effectively helps in maintaining the quality of river. So second option also becomes correct as heavy sand mining results in pollution of groundwater. 
However, the first option that is decreased salinity in the river becomes incorrect. So here B was our correct answer. So we understand that any issue relating to either pollution of river or erosion of river bed becomes important from an exam perspective. Thus, this news on draft bill becomes extremely important from a UPSC point of view. With this, let's move on to the next news. The next news appears on page number 8 as a lead article which says all for one and one for all. Each service of the military extolling its own importance is not helping India to study the changing character of the war. So this particular lead article talks about integrated theatre command where the army, the navy and the air force all work under a single command system. This particular article falls under GS paper 3 under security and specifically under security challenges and the management in border areas as well as various security forces and agencies as well as their mandate. So as per the Kargil committee report as well as the Naresh Chandra committee report, they focused on restructuring of higher defense organization with the intention to improve synergy among different tools of statecraft such as bureaucracy, military, research and development, intelligence, internal security mechanisms, etc. So of these reports, a regular concept that has emerged is of standalone integrated theater command or which is also known as a unified command. So in this aspect, first of all, let us understand about this integrated theater command. Now this integrated theater command, as already mentioned, it envisages a unified command of the three services, mainly army, air force, as well as the navy. So it envisages a unified command of the three services under a single commander for the geographical theaters that are of security concern and the commander of such a force will be able to bring all the resources at his disposal that is from army, air force as well as the navy. It further states that the integrated theater commander will not be answerable to individual services. So this becomes a very important aspect of this integrated theater command. In this respect, they shall be free to train, equip as well as exercise their command to make it a cohesive fighting force capable of achieving designated goals. So in this aspect, all the resources under Army, Air Force as well as, as the Navy will be under the head of this integrated theater commander. And the logistic resources required shall also be placed at the disposal of the theater commander. So we understand that this integrated theater command envisages a unified command system of army, air force as well as the navy. So here as per the article, the military would be integrated into western, southern as well as northern command structure which will subsume all operational functions of the existing 19 predominantly single services commands. However, in this aspect, the author has also highlighted certain concerns with respect to this single theater command. So let's go through the concerns as highlighted by the author in this lead article. The first concern as highlighted is that the creation of a chief of the defense staff may lead to dilution in the operational control of the respective service chief. The first point that the author highlight is that of a dilution of operational control. The second point which the author highlights is that the main apprehension of Indian Air Force is on how to exploit its limited offensive resources. Indian Air Force has expressed his concern that if they are hired off to a multiple theater command, they will not be able to exploit their limited offensive resources at their hand. Another concern highlighted by the author is that it would be difficult to replicate every single service command to every theater. Next is theater command structure has not been adopted by any major country in recent past. So the author says that this particular structure as of now has not been adopted by any major country. Next, the author highlights that even during Kargil war, there was no major issues with respect to joint working. Another point highlighted by the author is that integrated theater command when adopted in developing countries show certain ability of political influence by the top tier integrated military commanders. So here the author mentions about political influence in a single theater command. So these are some of the concerns highlighted by the author in this particular article. Hence, this article about integrated theater command becomes important to understand from a security point of view. With this, let's move on to the next news. The next article appears on page number 8. The article reads, Steps to stop the rot. The government must stop storing millions of tons of food grains in the open under tarpaulins. 
Now this particular topic of storing food falls under GS paper 3 under Indian economy as well as under science and technology as this talks about various molds and fungus which creeps into the cereal grains while they are moist. A question on such aspect was asked in the year 2013. First of all, let's go through what the news is, then we'll try to understand what the question in 2013 trying to ask. Now in this article, the author highlights the fault storage mechanism which is used in India for the storage of food grains procured by the Food Corporation of India. And the storage of food grains by FCI is done for the purpose of public distribution system which is also known as PDS. The author highlights that developed economies have adopted modern storage techniques. However, India still continues to rely on traditional cover and plinth method which the author has highlighted as CAP that is cover and plinth method. Now the author says that this particular method that is CAP method leads to wastage of food grains. Further the author highlights that through this method most of the cereals are exposed to air and humidity. This exposure to air and humidity results in development of molds which is very harmful to health. These food grains when processed also contain these molds and if consumed this can have adverse effect on people's health as some of these food grains are processed into other commodities such as flour. So these molds which are found in these processed food grains and other cereals which are exposed to air and humidity contains mycotoxins. So mycotoxins are naturally occurring toxins produced by certain molds or fungus and these can be also found in food. These molds or mycotoxins grow on a variety of different crops and foodstuffs including cereals, nuts, spices, dry fruits, apples, coffee beans etc. And these molds often develop under warm and humid conditions. These mycotoxins can cause a variety of adverse health effects and also pose a serious health threat to both humans as well as livestock. Now these mycotoxins also produce aflatoxins which are considered to be cancer causing agents. Further contaminated food may lead to a situation known as which may lead to aflatoxicosis which causes abdominal pain, vomiting, hepatitis and at times may lead to death. So this mycotoxins and aflatoxins becomes extremely important for us to understand from an exam point of view. Now this particular question was asked in the year 2013 in your prelims examination by the UPSC. It said improper handling and storage of cereal grains and oil seeds result in the production of toxins known as aflatoxins which are not generally destroyed by normal cooking process. Aflatoxins are produced by the options were bacteria, protozoa, molds and virus. We know that C is the correct answer that is molds. So we see a direct question on aflatoxins has been asked by UPSC in 2013. Hence this article on steps to stop the rot becomes extremely important from an exam perspective. With this let's move on to the next news. The next news appears on page number 10. The news reads GOM that is group of ministers takes up report on lynching. In this particular news, a group of ministers headed by the Home Minister has discussed a recommendation provided by the Rajiv Gomba committee on lynching. Now this topic of lynching becomes a part of GS paper 3 under challenges to internal security through communication networks, role of media, social networking sites in internal security challenges, basics of cyber security etc. Now this topic becomes important because as you can see a question was asked in GS paper 3 in the year 2017 itself. The question read mob violence is emerging as a serious law and order problem in India. By giving suitable examples analyze the causes and consequence of such violence. So we understand that the recommendations given by the Rajiv Gaba committee on lynching becomes extremely important to understand because of late we have witnessed an increase in cases of mass lynching. Now earlier in the wake of these increased cases of mass lynching, Supreme Court in its judgment had asked the central government to enact a law to deal with incidents of mass lynching. The central government accordingly constituted two high level committees. One committee was headed by the Home Minister Rajnath Singh and the other committee was headed by Union Home Secretary Rajiv Gauba. Now the committee headed by the Home Secretary Rajiv Gauba, one of the recommendations 
is to make the country head of various social media platform sites accountable and also compel them to act in a time bound manner and it is in this aspect that the government can even issue fir against these country heads that is first information report in this aspect the recommendation also states that the government can issue orders to remove objectionable contents from such websites or even block such websites containing objectionable contents so the group of minister headed by the home minister discussed the recommendations given by the home secretary rajiv gaba another recommendation of the committee is to make extreme stringent laws pertaining to lynchings so as to create a deterrent effect by making suitable amendments in our criminal laws it is important to note that in regard to cases of lynching the central government has also issued advisories to state government in such an advisory the central government has said that police and public that is maintenance of law and order is a state subject under 7th schedule of the indian constitution hence it is the responsibility of the state government to control crime maintain law and order and to protect life and property of its citizens thus as per the advisory the central government said that it is mandatory for the states to take effective measures to prevent cases of violence and lynch mobs and also to ensure equal protection of law to all citizens irrespective of any discrimination either on caste creed or even religion since this is a developing news so let's wait for the final call of group of ministers when they'll submit the recommendations of the committee to the prime minister for certain changes in our criminal law with respect to mob violence so this news on report of mass lynching becomes extremely important and we see a question in the year 2017 was asked by upsc mains examination with this let's move on to the next news the next news appears as a snippet on page number 7 the news reads madhumulai buffer zone to open for tourism now this particular news mentions about madhumulai tiger reserve so let's understand certain basic facts about this madhumulai tiger reserve as questions on these tiger reserves have been asked in the past by upsc in your prelims paper this becomes a part of general issues of environmental ecology as well as biodiversity and in the mains it forms a part of gs paper 3 under biodiversity and environment so let's understand certain basic facts about this madhumulai tiger reserve madhumulai tiger reserve is located in the nilgiris district of tamil nadu and this is located at the tri junction of three states namely karnataka kerala and tamil nadu now this madhumulai tiger reserve plays an important and unique role in forming part of nilgiris biosphere reserve now this madhumulai tiger reserve it is surrounded by vandipur tiger reserve in the north which is in the state of karnataka by vinad wildlife sanctuary in the west which is situated in kerala by the nilgiris north division in the south and east and by godalur forest division in the southwest so this surroundings becomes important as we see that this madhumulai tiger reserve is surrounded by bandipur in the north vinad wildlife sanctuary in the west nilgiris north division in the east as well as in the south and godalur forest division in the southwest hence this entire area forms a large conservation landscape for flagship species such as tiger and asian elephants now in this aspect let us learn about certain important flora and fauna found in this madhumulai tiger reserve now this madhumulai tiger reserve has tall grasses which is commonly known as elephant grass among important animals it has tiger elephant indian gaur panther sambar spotted deer barking deer common langur malabar giant squirrel wild dog mongoose hyena and other animals among the important birds found in this mudumalai tiger reserves are malabar grey hornbills malabar pied hornbill malabar laughing thrush malabar whistling thrush it also has variety of woodpeckers and peacock as well as jungle fowl among other birds so important facts about this madhumulai tiger reserve in this news is that it is located in the nilgiris district of tamil nadu and it is located at the tri junction of three states namely karnataka kerala as well as tamil nadu and it plays an important and unique role in the in forming part of nilgiris biosphere reserve now a similar question was asked in the year 2017 by upsc in the prelims examination 
Let's go through the question and try and understand what the UPSC was trying to ask. It said, from the ecological point of view, which one of the following assumes importance in being a good link between the Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats? Options were Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve, Nallamalla Forest, Nagarhol National Park and Shechalam Biosphere Reserve. In this, the right answer was Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. As you can see, that this Satmangalam Tiger Reserve is located at the confluence of two distinct geographical regions of biodiversity landscape that is Western Ghat and Eastern Ghat and this was the exact question asked by UPSC in the prelims examination of 2017. So here Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve become important from our exam perspective. It says that owing to its large contiguous forest and connectivity with adjoining reserve forest divisions other than tigers, this area has huge congregation of species such as elephant, gore, black buck, leopard, white black vulture, hyena, variety of deers, primates, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fishes and other lower creatures. So in this aspect, this geographical location of Mandumulai tiger reserves becomes extremely critical as you can see it is surrounded by different tiger reserves, wildlife sanctuaries as well as forest divisions and this entire area forms a large conservation landscape for this entire flora and fauna to develop. So in this aspect this Madhumulai Tiger Reserve becomes extremely important from our exam perspective. With this let's move on to the next news. The next news appears on page number 11. The news reads, in a first LCA undergoes mid-air refueling. LCA here refers to the light combat aircraft Tejas. Now this topic of mid-air refueling becomes a part of science and technology under general science in the prelims examination whereas in the mains it forms a part of GS paper 3 under technology especially science and technology developments and their application and effects in everyday life and achievement of Indians in science and technology, indigenization of technology and developing new technologies. So in this particular news Indian Air Force has successfully carried out the first ever mid-air refueling of the indigenously built fighter aircraft Tejas Mk1 and this refueling was done with the help of IL-78 Mk1 tanker. For the purpose of refueling, the IL-78 tanker was launched from its base from Agra whereas the LCA Tejas Mk1 was launched from Gwalior. Now in this aspect, let us understand some of the importance of this first mid-air refueling. Now success of these trials is a major leap forward for the indigenous fighter built by HAL that is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited as the capability of mid-air refueling will further help in enhancing its range and payload. Payload here refers to the amount of weight which an aircraft is able to carry. Another important aspect with respect to mid-air refueling is that this ability to carry out air-to-air -air refueling was one of the critical requirement for LCA Tejas to achieve final operational clearance. Another important aspect is that the Tejas aircraft has been indigenously designed and developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, apart from building Tejas, has also indigenously developed and designed advanced light helicopter Dhruv as well as Chetak or Cheetal helicopter. Thus, Tejas, advanced light helicopter Dhruv as well as Chetak or Cheetal helicopter has been indigenously designed as well as developed by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So this critical fact becomes very important from our prelims point of view. So this news on mid-air refueling of LCA becomes important mostly from a prelims point of view as it is for the first time that Indian Air Force has successfully carried out the first ever mid-air refueling of Tejas Mk1 by IL-78 tanker. With this let's move on to the next news. The next news appears on page number 11. The news reads, India supports Mauritius claim over Shagos Island. Now this particular dispute is between United Kingdom and Mauritius. And in this particular dispute, India has supported Mauritius claim over the disputed Shagos Island. This particular topic in the prelims examination forms a part of world geography as previously questions have been asked by UPSC on various cities as well as countries on the world geography map. So as far as the Shagos Island is concerned, as you can see, this is where we can find the Shagos Island. And this island becomes important because it is a military base of United Kingdom as well as the United States. 
As you can see that this particular island becomes a part of Indian Ocean region. Hence, it is in this aspect that India has supported Mauritius' claim over the Chagos Island. So in this backdrop, let us understand certain background about the sovereignty issue over this Chagos Island. As already mentioned that the sovereignty issue over the Chagos Island is disputed between Mauritius and the United Kingdom. Now Mauritius has repeatedly asserted that the Chagos Archipelago is part of its territory. And I say that the occupation of United Kingdom is a violation of United Nations resolution. However, according to the United Kingdom, an understanding was reached between the two countries in November 1965 upon the retention of the island by Britain for defense purpose, where the United Kingdom said that it would return the island to Mauritius when it no longer requires the island for its defense purpose. However, this was a very open-ended agreement. However, in this respect, Mauritius claimed that it agreed upon this 1965 agreement under duress or under great strain. On June 23, 2017, the United Nations General Assembly voted in favour of referring the territorial dispute to the International Court of Justice in order to clarify the legal status of the Chagos Islands and also to solve the question of territorial dispute between UK and Mauritius. So it is in this respect that India has supported Mauritius' claim over the disputed Chagos Island. So this topic becomes important from international relation perspective and also from world geography perspective as you should know where the Chagos Island is located. Which you can see in the map, it is located in the Indian Ocean region. So this news about India supports Mauritius claim over Chagos Islands becomes extremely important from an exam perspective. So let's wait for the final judgment of International Court of Justice. Then we'll analyze what the ICJ ultimately decides over the territorial issue of Chagos Island. With this, we come to an end to discussion of today's newspaper. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for daily DNS updates. With this, let's move on to the question for the day.